Oh, wait, that's the last flight. I, uh, I know I have the new one around here somewhere. One sec. Ah, there it is. Okay, here we go. Houston, you are go for TLI, over. Four, three, two, confirm. So right away, that's a lot better. Uh, I think we can all agree that. So the, there's not too many differences between flight three and flight four, which you just saw. Yeah, so the only real fix there is uh, the changing of the acceleration's reference direction. Like I said in my last video, I had a reference direction problem with the acceleration axis. Um, with things being flipped, it wouldn't trigger the guidance loop and we wouldn't actually end up going anywhere. So you can really see a night and day difference between having it flipped the wrong way and having nothing activate and having it turn on correctly with the axis going the right way. Between flights, I did a big scrub through of my code. I went in and I made sure that all the signs were correct, everything was moving the correct directions, the data processing and everything was grabbing the right values. So. For this flight, I had three main objectives. First of all, to go up, make sure my guidance loop and stability system all works as planned, which I had a lot of confidence in because I can test that really well on the ground. Second off, I wanted to be able to test the new fin system I put onto the rocket. These new fins have a different layout, they deploy differently, and I'm kind of going with a different strategy for stabilizing it. Down the road, if I ever wanna land one of these rockets, I need to make sure that the engine section is pointed in the right direction. Without that, there's no opportunity for landing and you'll never get there. The fin system is made to open right after burnout. This gives me a lot of time to be able to see how the fins are affecting the stability of the rocket and make sure that they are doing their job. Following that, we're able to deploy the parachute and come back safely. This flight is intended to test multiple deployments. So there's multiple flight events that need to happen on cue corresponding to different altitudes and flight conditions. Each of these different flight events correspond to a flight mode in the software, and it runs through these as a series of steps, one after the other. So in each loop, it's able to run the instructions given for that flight mode. So we have idle sitting on the pad, the powered ascent mode, which is going up and under control. Then there's coasting to Apogee with the fins out, traveling over Apogee, and then eventually at a set altitude, we trigger the flight mode that opens the parachute. If everything works, then we're able to see a nice clean liftoff, a straight flight, and fins deploy and point the rocket like a lawn dart at the ground. This means it's going to fall very, very fast, but the parachute is intended to trigger with plenty of margin to 
stop it before it hits the ground. In a landing scenario, you would be triggering an engine instead of the parachute to stop, and this requires a lot more precision than just triggering the parachute because it's a lot more dependent on altitude, speed, and initial conditions. This flight went absolutely great. Everything that was intended to happen did happen, albeit not entirely on cue, but we'll get to that in a minute. Right off the ground, everything takes off pin straight. The entire flight vehicle stays within three degrees of straight up. So this means that that control system inside the rocket is doing a great job at maintaining its direction. For this flight, I used an Apogee F10. It's a composite propellant motor that burns for seven seconds, so it provides a really great long flight and a lot of controllability on a TVC rocket like this. Over the seven seconds of burn, it was able to push the rocket up to an altitude of 110 meters or 326 feet. This is a new record for me, and I'm amazed by how straight everything flew on the way up. It also validates that I correctly diagnosed and fixed the problem from previous flights. Immediately after burnout, you can see the fins deploy and the rocket flips into reverse. With the fins deployed, it has moved the center of pressure forward on the rocket. And meanwhile, the center of gravity is focused at the aft end. This is also by design. I've crowded all of my electronics and heavy components into the aft section of the rocket to try and push the center of gravity as low as I can to provide as much stability at the top of the rocket as I can. Increasing the distance between the center of pressure and the center of gravity allows you a lot more stability and it ensures that you do something called weather caulking, which is when the size of the fins and the stability of the rocket cause it to point into the direction of flight. In my case, the direction of the wind is the direction that the rocket's moving and this ensures that the engine is pointing retrograde to the movement of the rocket. This is really important when it comes to setting up a landing burn because the better you can predict and understand the initial conditions, the better you can plan ahead and write software. With the fins deployed, we free fall until we reach the parachute deployment altitude. This is a pre-programmed altitude that's triggered based on the barometer inside the rocket where it's constantly tracking its altitude and running through the different flight phases. Because of how fast the fins make the rocket fall, we want to overestimate and add margin to the parachute deployment altitude. This margin allows us to make sure that the chute opens before we hit the ground, and man, I'm glad that I did that. I hadn't noticed until after the fact, but the chute attempted to trigger, and you can see through a section of the flight that the nose cone is off, but the chute is unable to escape the tube because the black powder charge I put in the rocket is not quite large enough to push out the entire chute and nose cone. As a result, it ended up hanging up right on the edge of being deployed. Right before impact, the parachute is able to pull itself free just due to the drag pulling on the nose cone. So what's next, you ask? Well, I have a few additions to make to the rocket for the next flight. Um, one of which you'll see here, I'm adding the legs back on. The legs add an extra deployment to the recovery sequence. While I'm not doing a landing burn, the legs will deploy at a given cue, and this will be right before touching the ground. Another addition is an onboard HD camera that I'm gonna be adding. I've had the mount set up and everything ready to go, and all I need to do is cut a small window here in the side so that it can see out and we can get a really nice HD view from onboard during flight. I'm gonna have a couple small fixes that I have to make as well. I ended up breaking one of the TVC uh, mounting points, um, which is an easy fix. It just involves reprinting it and reassembling it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I honestly couldn't ask for much better. I got to really see how well the fins worked and I got a first-hand look at how fast this thing can actually fall. But I will say it does give me a lot of hope for being able to point everything in the right direction and ensure that the engine section is pointing the correct direction for a landing burn. So yeah, thanks for watching. I guess I'll uh, see you in the next one. Houston, you are go for TLI, over.
whale talking, 